the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet the church and you that are visiting us, those that are following us through the media, with the glorious peace of the Lord. In reference, in reference to the word of the Lord, let's stand up. We're going to read two passages. The first one will be Genesis. Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 and 8. And the second text will be in Exodus chapter 12, verse 4. So first passage will be Genesis. Genesis. Dear Lord, Father, we can feel, we can feel, we know by faith that He, he had prepared this night for us. Blessed be the name. Amen. First text. Genesis 22nd. Sim. Então falou Isaac a Abraão, seu pai, e disse, meu pai, ele disse, eis-me aqui, meu filho. Ele disse, eis aqui o fogo e a lenha, mas onde está o cordeiro para o holocausto? E disse Abraão, Deus proverá para si o cordeiro para o holocausto, meu filho. Assim caminharam ambos juntos. Êxodo 12, 4 diz assim, se a família for pequena para um cordeiro, então tome um só com o seu vizinho, perto de sua casa, conforme ao número das almas, conforme ao comer de cada um, fareis a conta para o cordeiro. Senhor, nós lemos a tua palavra e pedimos que ao dissertá-la possamos entender os teus propósitos, aquilo que vai além da letra. Pedimos que o Senhor nos We ask you that to disarm all the human reserve of, of knowledge and give us the freedom to teach us so our minds can be ready to receive what comes from the eternity and that was prepared by faith by you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. The Bible as a word of God it's filled with the Lamb. The word Lamb it's mentioned in, in all the extension of the Bible. It's marvelous. It's powerful. And you know, it's something prophetic. The first mention is, is intrinsic because it speaks it speaks about something that's hidden that needs to be revealed. When our first father and mother they sinned, they sinned by disobeying. They didn't. They were pure before. They didn't know about that. And the Bible said that they, they try to cover the the sh the shamings of the the nude with with the leaves, but it wouldn't last a day. The leaves would dry out, and the Lord that was presented during the end of the day to greet them to know how they were, to check the health, to check if everything was okay. I want to see how you guys are. Adam and Eve, and one day they, the Lord notices that they, they were hidden, and the Lord acts as if he didn't know. They, the Lord calls them, and they, and they say, Lord, we're hidden because we are dirty, and the Lord comes. Try to resolve a problem, resolving a problem in the beginning. And the Bible says that God provided for them some people say it's dresses, skin of animals, and after that they have kids, Cain and Abel, and they grow up, and that they, and that they resolve to please the God, and they decide to give him offer. Cain was a shepherd. And he did what is in his eyes was best. He gave him what was best in his plantation. He was agricultural. 
the result of his work and he offered it to, to the Lord, to God. And the Bible says that God did not accept. Abel, Abel was a shepherd. And then he offers to God, one lamb and the Lord accepts it. So we see that the things of the Lord in the beginning are that there's a possibility to be found out and they find out when there's interest on it and if and when you want to please the Lord God Abel, Abel and Cain grew up listening to the experience of their parents the fall was the consequence of of the sin and also the solution of it and I'm sure that it's in the Bible I'm sure that when Abel heard the history this pleases the God because he covered my father and my mom with the leaves when they sin it's a prophetic you only finds out with intimacy with the Lord and after that comes this story we read that we read with Abraham God called Abraham and told him go to a go to the mountain go to the stone and I will show you it's hidden it's a mystery there was no GPS at the time there was nothing for him to guide him to go to that place how am I gonna how am I gonna get out of my comfort zone with my family my house my things but he feared the Lord he obeyed the Lord he believed it and he went on and the Bible said that on his walk was a beautiful walk with experience lots of experience and there was a moment that what God needed to prove him so God could give him more the Bible said the more you give the more it's, it's given it's something between you and the Lord if you serve the Lord if you're faithful if you're faithful with the little one the God will be faithful with with lots of things and so he God goes to Abraham and say the people around it the ones that didn't have the Lord the ones that didn't believe the Lord they offer their kids in sacrifice because in the eyes of the in the eyes of the people it was something that was scary but if God the holy powerful with the relationship he had with Abraham to the point he was called friend of God if if the, um, if the people do that who am I not to do it so him his man his servants all the things that were necessary to do that to the on the bottom of the mountain when the Lord says it's up there it's up there for you to offer your sacrifice and he says goodbye to these servants Abraham we will sacrifice and we will return by faith and if as a father as a, a, a pain there was also a faith there was also a hope God was asking me to do that Abraham perhaps he will resurrect my my son by after that we see that every detail Bible are pieces of are, are prophetic details that points out to eternity and the and the little boy that was uh, was used to see sacrifices of lambs in the middle of the, in the in the middle of the road he asked his father the father says I'm here I see everything's prepared I'm, I'm used to see it I see all the all the objects that are necessary but I'm not seeing the lamb where is the lamb and the father answers an answer that can only be prophetic God will provide the lamb blessed with the name of the Lord I like the brethren to meditate that, that this question was not a, just a loose question that Isaac many years many years ago stay in the time 
this is a question that's still being made to the world that does not know Jesus to the world that no, doesn't know Jesus in parts a world that, that is desperate to understand Jesus but for not having the presence of the Holy Spirit they, they be confused and they do the opposite of what's the will of God and the word asks where is the Lamb? and there is one that can answer that question which, which is the Holy Spirit the same way that the answer was revealed Abraham at that time it was revealed to Abraham at that time it can only be something revealed by God it was a marvelous answer if it was someone else they would not know how to answer that because the affliction of a father was consuming him I'm only I'm going to sacrifice my only son what's gonna be in my uh, what's gonna be my life I have to sacrifice my son if it was someone else they would answer that but Abraham answer what came from the eternity what took him to the eternity God will provide the lamb why didn't he say God will provide you will provide me God will provide your mom he could have said that but he said God will provide himself the lamp because he was pointed out to the son of God the only son that was given us to save us dying on the cross for us and then and then they put the kid position him and then the angel says, don't say it, don't do it. I know you are faithful, I know you love me. And in the same way that God provided the, the, the skin of animals to cover Adam and Eve, when Abraham looked in the back, there, there was a lamb. It was, it was tied on the trees. It, it, it's, it speaks about the Lord Jesus. Yep. He had all the spiritual maturity because he came from the eternity. He was ready to save our lives. He was ready to resolve my problem, your problem. But he provided that so me and you couldn't suffer. Bless be the name of the Lord. How the Abraham said to his servant, he He did it. He went there, he sacrificed, and he came back to his people. And then the people in Egypt, the ten past, come and they leave with instruction, very detailed. We don't need to go into detail on all the details, but all the necessary details we can go through. We have to take the lamp, bring it in home, stay with him 14 days. If you take a cat or dog for 14 days, they will get used to it. 14 days, this lamb would stay home, living with them. And then after that, it would be sacrificed, it would be dead. It would be killed, and it would be, it would be, it would be uh, killed to use the meat for the, for the feast. And the blood of the animal was going to be... door the doorpost yes it would be used to paint the doorposts yeah if you notice there's a vertical and a horizontal one the frame or the door frame when they got ready to organize themselves the people studied it see all the details that intrinsic but the God opens us our, our eyes to to make ourselves the blood of lamb was passed on the door post and, and the lamb would have to be eaten the entire entirely if you if you don't eat my my flesh and film, drink of my blood. And this word was given 
right after it was the multiplication of the of the of the fish and the bread. Yeah. <laughs> and if you eat my my meat and don't drink the blood. Drink the blood, eat the meat. But Jesus was not talking about biologics. He was talking about a communion. His blood was given when he died on the cross and his blood would be shed for us. The blood that's that's touching our hearts our hearts now when we talk about eternities. It's to leave the eternity from now. A lot of people think the eternity begins after death. No, it begins now. Now. If it hasn't begun to you, it can begin now. If you did not know the eternity, if you didn't if you're not sure where your soul would go, tonight you can start to leave it. Start to leave the eternity. Jesus asks them Do you want to go somewhere? Where are we going? The Lord is the one that provides. You hear a voice behind you. This is the way. Walk on it. Don't deviate to the left. Don't deviate to the right. But before Jesus died, he went to a supper. Mary, Mary presented to him and he used a very expensive perfume to oil to to pass on his on his hair. She cried on his feet. She cleaned his feet. If this man was prophetic, you know that was a sinner. People were saying that, but but the Lord heard his his thoughts. He knows all the thoughts, all of our thoughts, all of our needs, all of our weakness of our anguishes, frustrations. This at this moment he's surrounding our hearts and wants to bless us. And he said to the owner of the party, I came in, you did not give me water to wash my feet, you didn't kiss on my, my cheek. At those times they would they would they would greet people with a kiss on the cheeks. It's a kiss. That it's just just a, a fraternal moment. He didn't use oil on my hair. But this woman, since I came in, she doesn't stop doing that with me. It's us, the faithful church, the faithful church of the Lord, the one that's always on the feet of the Lord, only on the feet of the Lord. That's a solution. That you, perhaps you came here, you, you live in a depression, something that that you can't get away of, of you've looked for professional help doctor come to the Jesus feet cry on his feet because doing that you will know the intimacy and you will understand perfectly and at the end he says what she did will be remembered to all the eternity it's still remember here now September 1st 2004 what she did was still remember now it was something prophetic the Holy Spirit moved her to do it and she even said it he was preparing for my bury bury the funerals they used a lot of ingredients to put on the body that, that was going to be buried and one of the ingredients the myrrh it, pro it produces a resin which thing to to bomb it, to bomb the body yep prophetically Jesus is saying I'm gonna suffer but there's a church that's called faithful church not Maranatha not other church but a faithful church a church that listens that keep my my commandments and I will send my Holy Spirit to comfort and 
keep a joy. The myrrh does that. The myrrh preserves the body that's buried. When Jesus, when it's, when I, when I go, I will not leave you orphans. I will, I'll send the Holy Spirit, the Consoler, to preserve the church. The church, the church is the body of the Lord, the Christ, and He is the head. And as we are the body of Christ, we are preserved because of His suffering and the cross of Calvary. And was it was the cross when they shout to crucify Him, when they would make fun of Him, when they do the plate, call Him, calling Him the King of the Jewish sarcasm, they use all the sarcasm to the speed on him. They use nails on his hands, on his feet. And they and now pour the whole spirit on the on the flesh. Your sons and daughters. And this is what we're living here today as a church. We we leave this prophecy because Jesus died and on the cross and he looks with compassion and says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. We are not. We are dignified to reach this blessing, this victory. In the name of the Lord. Everything is consumed. The price was paid. It was sealed. My, my commitment with you. I came from eternity. I left my glory to pass through all this for you to love for your love. Now I'm living, but on the third day he's res he resurrected. Blessed be the good. Sunday morning they went to the they, they went to the stone to the cavern. Where did they put the body of Jesus? When we see. We imagine the love of God, Mary and Magdalena, how they were worried with the, with the Lord, with the things of the Lord. But the, for them, it had been revealed that was an angel. Why? Why are you looking among the dead, the, the one that lives? And when they saw, when they saw the coffin empty, they understood that he was alive, he resurrected, Jesus was alive. And Revelation chapter 5, John said, a book, and he cries. What? But there was nobody on the heaven, on the earth, and beneath the earth that was dignified, that was dignified of open the seal and there was a presence of the ancient that said he is the lie the lie of the judah tribe blessed be the name of the lord brethren you are among where we found out secrets the faithful church sees all the things happening in the world but this does not it scare us because in every, anything the seal is being opened and a prophecy is being made and and we know soon Jesus is coming to return to take us it, it's a, it's a marriage the Bible calls the wedding is is the lamb it's come because everything is preferred the groom the groom is ready because Jesus soon will come back. We, we need to be prepared, you and I. We need to leave Jesus entirely. Not only on the Psalms 23 or 92 or 91, but when we need to leave. Because if we leave the flesh and if we drink the blood, we have the life, the eternal life. And Maranatha will make the difference. This name will make all the sense. Soon we'll be with Jesus in the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless me. Bless be the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit brought you here. You uh, observe that the second text talks about neighborhood. T tonight is a special service because we invited the neighbors. We pray for the neighbors on Mark, and the Lamb is being uh, it's being shared with you. The salvation in Christ is being shared with you, and the name of the Lord is being glorified because tonight you have the opportunity the opportunity to have the beginning of a different life a different life from everything that's offered in this earth with the Lord and the Holy Spirit that brought you here reveal a woman that needs that needs experience because her heart is divided she knows the Bible she knows the, the history of the Christianism but she knows only knows Jesus until his his teenagers until the miracles but she needs to know Jesus after the resurrection the Lord doesn't want her to be divided that she serves the Lord in her heart that she can be understand and there's also a man there's that is being value value the detail of the cross but only in the cross figure he thinks that Jesus and he brings objects that brings death. But as this, even though we pass the blood and the door, and the door, and the door, yes, the, the Lord, we think it's the cross was most important. No, the cross is symbolic. The cross doesn't exist anymore. Except, except that's why John cried. There was nobody in the Lord. There's no other spiritual leader, spiritual leader. But our Lord resurrected. He died in the third day. He resurrected. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That you can leave here tonight understanding Jesus beyond the death, beyond the resurrection, beyond the sense of verb, beyond, beyond the feeling that he died only, but he's uh, he's alive, and he brings us the Holy Spirit. I I invite you to stand up. The big ob objective of this service was preparing the eternity. We are here just instruments on the hand of the Lord, so you can have an encounter with this lamb. John, when it was being brought in the belly, and Jesus was, John came out of, of the belly, and Isabel was full of the Holy Spirit, it was a prophetic moment which was pointed that Jesus was the, the, the Savior. So they grew up together, and when they and when saw him say, there is the Lamb of the God, 
the Lord that takes the way the sin of the world. We're doing the same thing as John because we, when we are generated for the salvation, we today we point out Jesus to you. There is the Lamb of the, the Lord that takes away the sin of the world. We're going to pray. If you want a, a, a prayer, please stay where you are. Because we come to you, we'll pray for you. Thank you for coming to know from you when, how much Jesus, how much the Holy Spirit could operate in your life. Dear Lord, receive this service and take us in peace for a week of victory, deliverance, and a peaceful night that we can sleep waiting for the commitment of Maranatha that soon you will come soon your son will come and could be tonight while we sleep in the name of Jesus Amen please be seated Tuesday at night we we'll have the the biblical study. Thursday we have a prayer service at 8 p.m. We are invited. Please come back to to learn more. Saturday and Sunday 7:30. Our service. Please welcome. We we'll greet you all with the peace of the Lord. Thank you. para despertar e orem por todos os países onde existe uma igreja e anunciando o Cordeiro Vivo. Amém? A paz do Senhor.